Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, on to my next section of videos, I guess. Uh, the accomplish list. Clients have a desire, and as somebody who talks to a client and sells a job and all that fun jazz, we have a responsibility to set an expectation. I find clients, not that they welcome change orders, but they don't fight you as bad on change orders if they're not expected unexpected if they're not unexpected right so if you set a realistic expectation with the client uh, then they know what to expect as far as noise and disturbance and impact and what the job will look like at the end of it and blah 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 blah. blah. there's a lot of conversations that you have to have with customers uh, going into it an example uh, there was a customer I went to in Thousand Oaks they had just done a sixty five thousand dollar kitchen remodel and the contractor that did all of this work for them didn't tell them that the house was down 10 inches over in the corner of the kitchen. And uh, they had like cut angles on all of these custom cabinets in order to make everything fit. And in order to level it out, which they tried to do after the remodel, it would have basically broken everything. None of the cabinets would have looked right once we lifted 10 inches on this back corner, we would have broke the back slider that was just replaced, we broke the window that was just replaced. We would have cracked up the drywall and all that fun stuff. And that's important for customers to know going into it, right? So when I am designing a project, um, there's a couple of accomplished list items that you can really talk about when it comes to like foundation leveling and stabilization. Um, there's a lot of ancillary things that, that you should talk about on the side, like I guess items that you should discuss, and maybe I'll make another video about that. Um, that actually sounds like a good plan, but um, as far as accomplish list, it essentially boils down to three things for me. Option one, the customer is bothered by the slope in the house. They're, they're bothered by the damage. Uh, they're looking to resell and they have to level the house out. It's just their definition of success in this project is achieving lift, maybe even lift to full zero. Now, most of us know you can't promise a lift to full zero, it doesn't matter the type of system you're using in order to level the house out, but um, you know, maybe that's what's important to them. That becomes your class A repair, right? Um, when you do a class A repair, you're probably gonna do piers. Could be push piers, which have the best possible lifting opportunity, could be helical piers, whatever. Um, more than likely you can do piers. You can do caissons, you can do a couple of other things like that, but lifting is gonna be relatively limited with those one way or the other. Uh, best possible lifting opportunity is gonna be your hydraulic resistance piers or your hydraulic push piers. So boom, as soon as a customer says, I want lift, I have to have this and that's my thing, I, it's piers. I, that picks my repair for me, right? <laughs> Because if I do the job and I take the risk, I just roll the dice and I try to use polymer injection or caissons or something else to, 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 to lift it up and, and I only get like eh, kind of a lift, then the customer's gonna be absolutely livid. And that's when you start getting into arguments about the contract and, and so on and so forth. And you can avoid all of that by just following a set expectation. And that expectation, if it's lift, that's what it is, right? Uh, the second one is Potentially lifting. I like this one. It's a lot better. So if the house is down five inches, okay, and you can negotiate with them to pick it up, I don't know, maybe there's a gradual slope that tapers down that's not even visible until the end. So you can pick it up two inches and, and call it a day. Maybe the lift just kind of bothers them, right? And I find most customers are somewhere between C and B. Uh, C being stabilized, I guess I'll just write that. Stabilize only. Most customers don't want to deal with this problem again. Uh, it's daunting, it's expensive, it's difficult, it, it, it's a lot of things. So most of them want to make sure that they stabilize only. But if you could lift a little, we'd appreciate that kind of thing, right? So I find most people revolve somewhere around B. But if you're potentially lifting, you can go to your compaction grouting, which has good chance to lift, right? Sometimes all the way up, sometimes not, uh, sometimes down. Uh, you can do your piers, because lift, duh. Um, 
you could do caissons, you could do grape, so on and so forth. You can do everything, right? Because it's the potential to lift. And the client has a realistic expectation that you're not picking this thing up to zero. And there's a chance we might not lift the house, right? Asterisk on all this. When you get to raised floor foundation systems, remember that polymer requires surface area in order to lift, right? So if you got a little 12 inch footing and you're trying to like target your upward force in this 12 inches, very, 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 very difficult. Can you do it? Yes. So you can still do compaction grouting and B when it's a uh, raised floor foundation, but not A at all. But have some discussions because you're generally gonna have a very limited uh, lifting capacity when using compaction grouting underneath a raised floor foundation system. And then the third one is stabilize only, right? So you do, I mean, you can literally do all systems. It's, right, you can do all systems down there. Um, the advantage to doing stabilize only is you can generally space your piers further apart if you're using a steel underpinning system because the pressure on your footing is the greatest at the moment of the lift with the piers, right? So if you eliminate that moment, you just treat the piers, uh, treat the footing as a beam and you're supporting the beam without creating a moment, then you can space your piers further apart. So generally speaking, as far as dollars and cents go, cheapest option is C. Next up is B. And the most expensive is A. Just kind of the way it goes. Um, Again, the house that you're lifting or the structure that you're lifting is going to be the ultimate decision maker in how much you can lift because sometimes you start to create structural damages and walls start tilting or separating from the eaves and all of that is stuff where like you have to stop lifting, <laughs> right? If something's settled down 10 inches, it's not necessarily in alignment and it might not just fit like a glove back up, especially if wood elements have started to flex or, or, or change or... or, or what am I looking for? Morph, warp. If they started to warp. Um, There's just things that limit your lifting capacity. So um, you can never guarantee a full lift. Those are conversations everyone should be having with you. But based off of what's important to the clients, usually determines my repair system front and back. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop a comment below or uh, private message me directly. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and all the fun jazz, and I will see you guys next time.